Okay, we continue our study of groups and first some definitions uh, left and right cosets. Uh, first of all, let H be a subgroup of G and let A be some element of G. Then we define AH as follows. Okay, so A is an element of G. It's a particular element. And AH is defined as the as all elements that can be expressed as a product. A times H, where H is an element of uh, the subgroup H. And this is called a left coset left coset of H in G determined by A so this A is this A okay and similarly we define the right coset that is HA so since uh, in general in groups we don't assume commutativity of products so HA and AH can, are different in general and this is called uh, the right coset H in G and so on determined by A Okay, note that A is always an element of HA, this uh, right coset, determined by A. And we have, for if, uh, uh, for all elements in G, if we have AH, so the left coset of H is equal to the right coset of H, if and only if H is a normal subgroup in G. So actually this is just a straightforward result from the defini very definition of the normal subgroups. Yeah, you should uh, check what this means. So we uh, define the left cosets and right cosets, but in the following we mostly deal with right cosets because uh, similar results all also hold for left cosets once we prove everything for the right cosets. Okay, so here's the first theorem. Uh, suppose H is a subgroup of G. Okay. and let's assume A and B are elements of G, then the following statements are equivalent. Equivalent. So first, HA is equal to HB and two there exists some element in the subgroup H such that uh, B is equal to HA and 3 B is an element of HA and 4 B A inverse is an element of H so when we say these four statements are equivalent that means this one holds if and only if two holds and only if three holds if and only if four holds so we can prove that so if one is true then two is true then three is true then four is true then one is true so after all if we uh, 
So, so th there's a cycle here. So, but in this way, if 4 is true, then 2 is true. And therefore, 3 is true. If 3 is true, then 4 is true, 1 is true, 2 is true, and so on. So we try to prove this theorem in this way. Okay, let's prove this. So we first prove this one. Okay, so that means suppose this is true. Suppose H A is equal to H B. Then uh, let's see. We want to prove uh, this. First of all, B is an element of H B, right? And but H B is equal to H A. But H A is a subset of G such that each element is expressed as uh, H times A, where H is an element of uh, capital H, right? So this means B can be expressed as H A for some H. So that is what we wanted to prove. So there is uh, some H such that H A is equal to B. Okay, then uh, next, uh, if this is true, if this is true, then uh, B is an element of H A. But this is obvious. Since uh, this is almost uh, by definition. Uh, so if B is equal to H A for some H A, then B is an element of H A. And next, uh, 3, then 4. So if we assume this, uh, wait a minute. Uh, okay, so if we assume this, then so if we assume this, then B is B can be expressed as H A. So this is just as actually a result of B. And so if we multiply uh, by A inverse from the right, then we have B A inverse is equal to H, but H is an element of capital H. So we are done. Then next, uh, if 4, then 1. So if we assume uh, B A inverse is an element of H, then this means uh, B A inverse is equal to H for some H, right? So that means uh, H, so capital H times uh, lowercase h is equal to h because uh, multiplying uh, the, an element of h itself doesn't change uh, this sub subgroup h. So this means, uh, but h is uh, b times a inverse. And And let's see. Then what? So B H B is equal to H uh, B E. E is the identity uh, element. And if B is identity and we have B A inverse A. 
because e is equal to a i inverse a uh, but uh, but this part but this part is equal to h so h a therefore we have h b is equal to h a so that is one so we have proved that uh, all these four statements are equivalent okay next theorem shows why cosets are important so that says uh, any okay h is again a subgroup of g and any two right cosets of h in g are either uh, equal or disjoint okay so that means if we have two cosets h a and h b then one of the uh, following two cases are possible uh, that is either h a is equal to h b or h a intersect h b is empty okay so this or this and nothing else so that's what this says so and consequently Uh, the set of all cosets uh, I mean we are talking about right cosets cosets uh, comprise a comprises a, a partition of G so if you remember a partition of G means uh, every element of G belongs to one of the cosets one of the right cosets of this form and so every single element of G uh, belongs to one of the cosets okay so that means the set of all cosets is uh, mutually disjoint and collectively exhaustive so it so this covers entire G okay so if we have uh, some causes like a uh, HB H, uh, HC and so on so, so if we take all the cosets and take the union of them then that will be equal to G okay and all of the cosets are disjoint I mean we are removing the redundancy based on this so if they are equal just we uh, pick one of them either HA or HB okay so in this way uh, the set of all right cosets makes the partition of G so let's prove this theorem and suppose A and B are elements of G and we show either h a is equal to h b or h a uh, cap h b is empty okay so to to prove this uh, suppose uh, h a cap h b is not empty okay so suppose then if this is the case this must be the case so that's what we prove okay if this is empty then that's fine so let's suppose this is uh, the case uh, the intersection is not empty and then uh, let x be an element of this intersection 
Okay, so that means x is an element of HA and x is an element of HB. Right? So this means there is some element of H uh, such that uh, x is equal to H1A and also uh, and there is an element H2 in H such that x is equal to H2 times B because of this. Right? So from here we get this, from here we get this. So of course this x and this x are the same x. So h1a is equal to h2a, uh, 2b. Okay, and if we multiply uh, both sides uh, by a inverse from the right, we have uh, let's see h1 equals to h2b a inverse and we multiply by h2 inverse from the left then we have h2 inverse h1 is equal to b a inverse but uh, h1 and h2 are both elements of h right this and this so that means h2 inverse uh, times h1 is an element of h because h is a subgroup so it is closed under multiplication so this means but uh, h2 inverse times h1 is b a inverse By the previous theorem, this implies that uh, uh, implies that H A is equal to H B. So, if uh, the intersection is non-empty, it must be the case that the two uh, cosets are equal. And to prove that the set of all cosets is a partition of G, uh, it's actually easy to see. So for any, uh, okay, for uh, for any x, uh, which is an element of G, x is an element of H x. That's obviously. So every element of G belongs to at least one of one of the cosets, one of the right cosets. Okay. And and uh, and if two cosets are different, uh, then their intersection is empty. So they are disjoint. If uh, H, X, and H, Y is non empty, then H, X is equal to uh, uh, H, Y, or equivalently, if they are uh, not equal. So, so the uh, contrapositive of this statement is that uh, if uh, maybe I should write uh, so if this is the case then uh, the contrapositive of this means if two cosets are different then their uh, intersection is empty so they are disjoint so this proves that if two cosets are different, then they are disjoint. So the set of all uh, the set of 
all call set all write call sets is a partition of G and we are done uh, let's see an example our favorite example that is the dihedral group D4 of order 8 and we have seen that uh, EF is a subgroup let's call it H here so uh, let's try to find all the right cosets of H okay so H E is <coughs> e, e E F which are of course E and F and H A is E A and F A so E A is A F A is D and H B is uh, E B uh, F B that is B and F B is uh, H so B H and H C E C F C uh, that is C and F C is G and H D is uh, D and A so this is this and this are the same set and H F is so E F and F F is F and F F so EF and EF and H G is E G F G that is G and F G is C so C G we have seen before here this one is the same as this one and H H and that is H and F H is B so let's see H B is same as this one so after all we have uh, wait a minute so E F is actually same as this one too. Ah, okay, so. so we have one, two, three, four different, four distinct uh, right call sets. And if we take the union of these, so that is H E and H A and H B and H C so these are the distinct uh, right call sets so that uh, so EF EF and AD and uh, BH and uh, CG and this is so E A B, C, D, uh, F, G, H. So this is equal to G itself. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 elements. And as we can see, uh, they are disjoint, right? None of them have uh, same elements in common. So these are indeed uh, a partition of G. And based on all these uh, observations, we define the following terms. And so if we have a subgroup H uh, 
of G. Uh, then if G can be written as uh, something like this. So it so uh, the set of cosets of H in G defines a partition of G. So it, so uh, the set G can be expressed as a union of all these cosets and so on. So if there are infinitely many uh, distinct cosets, then we say uh, uh, G has infinite index. Okay, uh, if if there are infinitely many uh, let's say right cosets G then we say uh, G has uh, G ha uh, infinite index Uh, not G, it's H actually. H has uh, infinite index. In G. Okay. And if there are finitely many distinct right cosets, uh, if uh, Finitely right cosets, then uh, then we say uh, H has. Uh, finite index and that is which is equal to equal to uh, the number of uh, distinct right cosets Okay, and this number, uh, this index is, oh, this index is denoted by uh, this G column H, um, uh, this uh, vertical bars. Okay, index of H in G. Okay. And although we defined uh, the index of a subgroup based on right cosets, uh, the same can be defined for left cosets. And this index doesn't depend on whether whether we used right or left cosets. Okay, so it's, it becomes the same thing. In fact, uh, if we can express G as a finite union of cosets, right cosets. So if the index of H is N, uh, we can express G as a union of N cosets. Right? If this is the case, then G can be expressed as a, as a union of, uh, of the same number of left cosets as in A1 inverse H. union A2 inverse H union and so on uh, okay so uh, the the index of H in G doesn't depend on whether we use the right cosets or the left cosets <coughs>